this last video of module 1 briefly explains why the concept of urban metabolism is so important for policymakers. To do so, we'll first explain what traditional urban environmental policies are doing and how urban metabolism can help overcome some of their shortcomings. Traditional urban environmental policies are often fractured. Each policy focuses on a different issue such as mobility or energy efficiency. The proposed policies offer therefore individual solutions without considering the relationship between these challenges. However, if you remember when we were talking about the global challenges, there is a very complex relationship bet between all of them. Surpassing one of the planetary boundaries can trigger chain and non-linear reactions leading to cross other boundaries as well. This could lead to abrupt and irreversible changes that could be catastrophic for human well-being. Um, another shortcoming from traditional policies is that they assume that resource use and pollution emission drivers have a linear effect on consumption and pollution. In addition, the environmental impacts from this resource use and pollution are considered to be linearly linked. However, this assumption greatly underestimates how feedback loops and rebound effects can affect our consumption and environmental impact. The next limitation of traditional policies is their end-of-pipe approach. In other words, traditional policies offered downstream solutions that aim to minimize harmful effects through efficiency instead of questioning the root of the problem itself. For instance, end-of-pipe solutions could be the introduction of catalytic, uh, catalytic converters in cars. While they reduce the pollution coming from cars, they don't solve the whole mobility issue. The end-of-pipe approach is also suffering from what we call the late recognition syndrome, meaning that environmental issues are noticed when it's already too late or when they already are too severe. The last limitation of traditional policies is that they only focus on local issues such as local pollution or local waste generation. Nevertheless, cities affect a much wider area called its hinterland. As we will see in the next module, most cities depend on a number of countries to satisfy their needs. This means that in order to reduce their um, environmental footprint, a city needs to propose policies that take into account their entire, um, their, their entire hinterland. Now that we have presented some shortcomings from traditional policies, let's have a look how urban metabolism could help overcome them. Let's start with the simplest diagram of an urban metabolism. It just considers flows entering and exiting from a city. This type of simplistic representation is what is used for uh, by traditional policies. By subdividing the flows entering and exiting in cities and out of cities, it is possible to see a number of challenges simultaneously. Another element that urban metabolism studies can offer to policymakers is taking into account its complex functioning. By subdividing a city into different subsystems, here society, economy and built environment, it becomes possible to understand how each subsystem is responsible for parts of the flows and can help identify drivers of resource use and pollution emissions. In other words, is it society that uh, impacts the most? Is it economy that impacts the most? Or is it the built environment that impacts the most on the entering and exiting flows? Or is it a combination of these three? Finally, urban metabolism studies help to explore the relationship between flows and the different urban subsystems. In other words, how society um, impacts the energy flows and how energy impacts society. For instance, when a building is built, it not only requires new materials to be built and other resources to be uh, used, it also changes the city itself. Urban metabolism studies can therefore help to explicit uh, the nexus between 
the city and its flows, but also between flows themselves. To conclude, urban metabolism is relevant for policymakers as it helps to overcome the shortcomings from traditional policies and offer a more complex understanding of cities. This enables more coherent and comprehensive urban environmental policies.